Hello everyone, this is Charles here from Valves and More, an online vintage tube store. And today on Tube Lab number 104, we're going to take a closer look at a tube we've talked a bit about recently, the 6N6P. And if you stay till the end, you can hear about some new tube sets we're adding into the store and a sale we're running on some high-end 6SL7s. But first, caution everyone. Electronics and tube amplifiers can have very high voltages present, which can be lethal. Exercise extreme caution when working around them, and always consult a professional when in doubt. So it's been a bit since we've had a tube lab that's focused on one particular tube type, but we've been so enamored by this tube recently that we felt it deserved its own episode. So let's dig in and take a closer look at this interesting multi-purpose tube. So you've seen this guy on camera before. This is the 6N6P, and it is a dual triode nine pin design. And I think they're pretty nice looking tubes. They also lamp really nicely. Whenever these are lamped, it lights up along this edge of the tube here, and they glow quite strongly. They have a high heater current. So this is the most common version that you're going to see right here. And you can tell because it has Sorry, the light's kind of catching it a little strange here, but it's got that saucer that you typically see in Soviet tubes. And this plate design is the most common as well. But there are other versions of them, so you can do a little bit of rolling if you do some searching. This one looks almost the exact same, but take a look at that saucer. Well, it's not a saucer anymore, I should say. It's a, it's a square. And this one was made by Photon. It's actually quite a bit rarer. You don't see nearly as many of these. And apparently they're sought after for their sound, but they, they all sound great to me. This last guy here is the earliest version we've been able to find. These other two tubes are most commonly found in date ranges of the 1970s to 1980s. We found a small number of these that were made in the 1960s. This one, I believe, let's check the date on that. This one is 1961. And you can see the plates are boxier. And they have these interesting sort of weld points all over them, I guess, that are holding them together. And it does have a saucer getter holder. But it's been sort of flattened out and smushed. It looks different from the other ones. So there's some interesting variety available here. It took me a bit of time to figure out the best way to talk about this tube. It's challenging because it has so much going for it and so many parallels with other tubes. So let's compare it to some types you probably already know and maybe that'll help things along. So first of all, let's get the spec sheet out here. First of all, we've got an amplification factor of 22, which you'll commonly see as a U on the Soviet spec sheets or MU on others. Uh, sometimes it will literally just say amplification factor. So 22 puts it in the range of something like a 6SN7 or a 12AU7, meaning it can be used in similar circuits as a voltage amplifier. So that's a plus right there. Next, it can push 28 milliamps per triode. So if you parallel the plates, you get something in the range of an EL84 output pentode. And into the right load, the 6N6P can output up to 8 watts. I think it's something like 4.6 per triode, though. If you're, um, you can push one of them a little bit further compared to both of them being run at the same time. That's pretty standard for a lot of these tubes. It also has a very low plate resistance of 1800 ohms. So four of these tubes in parallel would get you into the range of a 6AS7 or 6080 power triode and allow you to use them in an output transformless design with high impedance headphones. What else does it have going for it? Well, it runs on a 6.3 volt heater, which is by far the most common heater standard, so it will be easy to find power transformers with the right windings. 
and it uses the B9A pin pinout standard that is also used by the likes of the 6DJ8, 6CG7, 6N1P, and many others. And since it's using the B9A standard, that means we also get a shield on pin 9. So that means less noise, assuming it's connected, and that's always good. So, oh, excuse me. So the tube itself is either a copy of, uh, or was inspired by an earlier tube called the E182CC made by Philips. They share a lot of similarities and are nearly identical in specs. The plate structure of the E182CC is actually really close looking to this very early version of the tube with that very boxy design and the heater is visible from the edges like that. So you can see, if you do take a look at the E182CC, you can see the similarities right away between the two tubes. The E182CC is well regarded as a great dual triode for audio purposes. Unlike the 6N6P though, it runs on 12 volts, but it has a center tapped heater if you want to use 6 volts to pin 9. That also means it doesn't have a shield there though, so that can affect things a little bit. But it's also quite rare, and it's expensive, with new old stock often selling upwards of around $100 US. Online, you're going to often see the 6N6P being sold as a replacement for the E182CC. And if we ignore the heater and pinout, then that would be fine. But don't make a mistake and plug the E182CC into a circuit design for the 6N6P. It's not going to work. And in the best case scenario, um, nothing gets damaged. Worst case, you're going to damage something on there, and, and vice versa. Um, I think I checked it out, and if you put a 6N6P into an E180CC circuit, it's probably not going to damage anything. You might blow a fuse. Um, the other way, though, I think you're probably going to kill your tube with high voltage going to the heater, so keep that in mind. Don't, don't swi switch them out. So why are we giving so much attention to the 6N6P now? Well, we're now using it in two of our amplifiers as the driver for the GU50 and as a voltage amplifier in our headphone amp. In each case, it's performed its job perfectly and has been very easy to work with and has sounded great. This is a great segue into what's going on over at Mellow Tone Kits. Well, Dad has finished building the second GU50 monoblock and we've been busy critically listening, which of course is always the fun part of this. The results confirm everything we expected whenever we were listening to it in mono. First of all, the clarity and detail in the amplifier are just incredible. You can hear every little detail in your music, but the presentation isn't overwhelming or too technical sounding to my ears. If there's one downside to it, it's that it really, really relies on you playing high quality source music. Basically music that was recorded well and mixed well, um, not compressed, and it, you, you'll just hear it right away if you're playing poor source music on there. But that being said, if, if it was from a good recording, if you have a good copy of something, the music just comes to life. It presents extremely well in all ranges, but the amp has its own unique sound that we think is really something special. It's very dynamic, very fast, clean, clear, and crisp, as Dad likes to say. And let's not forget about the soundstage. It is huge, but it's not sloppy. You can play tracks with great ensembles and pick out every instrument and its location. If you close your eyes, it feels like you're sitting there right in front of them. We have a bit more work to do to push this amp across the finish line and get it ready for the first run of test builders. And you're likely going to hear the call out for that within the next month or two. So be ready for that. What about the headphone amp? Well, it's another one that uses the 6N6P. And the sound it lends as a voltage amplifier is very unique. The first time I listened to it, 
I turned to dad and I said, this is the tube that all the classic rock and bass heads will love to run. It has a great punchy detailed bass, but doesn't skimp out on the mid and top range. That's for sure. As for where we are with the kit, well, we're working on it. We get messages constantly asking for updates on the progress, and I'm looking forward to the day when I can say the first run is in the store and ready to buy. This amp is going to take a little bit longer to get out though. It's our first fully integrated amp, and we're building it on a completely new and unique chassis that we hope will be both functional and beautiful sitting on your desk or next to your listening chair. We're tweaking things with the circuit right now and exploring the possibilities of adding some really cool functionality to it. We're trying to provide a great set of features that have all been implemented very well and we really, really want to get this thing right before it ends up on your doorstep. Now, sorry, now that the GU50 development is mostly done, expect us to really dig in and make quick progress and expect an update video over on the Melotone Kits channel soon. So we've got one more thing to talk about in regards to the 6N6P. We aren't the only ones using it, which probably isn't that surprising considering how good of a tube it is. Another amplifier maker, Shit Audio, which I'm sure you've all heard of, they use the tube in the output stages of a couple of their OTL output that output transformerless, I always seem to stumble over that, amplifiers. And recently, they announced and began shipping the new Freya Novel amplifier. This is a 4-2 amp, and it's similar to their Freya Plus amplifier, but where the Plus used 6SN7 tubes, the Novel is making use of a whole bunch of tubes that fit the B9A base. And of course, the 6N6P is one of them. The only thing you can't do with the Novel is run four of these at the same time. The 6N6P draws, I let me check here, I think it's 750 milliamps of current at 6.3 volts. It's quite a bit for such a small tube. And unfortunately the Freya Novel just can't handle that. It can handle two of them. So you can run two of these tubes and two of a lower heater current tube in their amp and it will be just fine. We think it's going to be just as great sounding in other circuits as it has been in ours. So what we've started to do now is just like our Freya Plus sets that we sell in the store, we're putting together Freya Novel sets. And the 6N6P is going to be one of the tubes that we have in these sets. So take a look at the store and uh, we're going to have those up very soon. I'm going to try and get them up this weekend and we should have some really nice options for those of you out there that like to roll tubes. Um, some of the different ones that we're looking at right now are the 6N23P, which is similar to the 6DJ8, the 6N1P, which is also similar to it, but it's kind of like a mix between a 12AU7 and a 6DJ8. Um, we also have the EV versions of those tubes. The 6N6P, of course, is going to be in there. And there are also some American and European made tubes that, uh, that will run in the amplifier as well. So we're going to be putting up a whole bunch of different sets and uh, hopefully you're going to love rolling them in there just like you've loved rolling in the Freya Plus. Okay, so let's clear the deck here. Oh, actually real quick first, I didn't take a look at this guy here. This is an example of a new old stock 6N6P-I. And the dash I version is means that it's rated for pulse. Uh, the N in Cyrillic is I for us. So whenever it's pulse rated, that means it was meant for computer duty, where it would be turned off or it wouldn't be running for a large uh, portion of the time, and then it would be forced on or off. Uh, it's also called switching duty. Most of the time, you don't want to use computer tubes in amplifiers because they, they just aren't very good sound and they weren't selected for low noise because they didn't care if they had noise. But these dash eyes actually do sound really good. The only problem is, is that their specs are a little bit different and so we don't know if these will actually work inside of the, um, of the Freya Novel. 
but we do know that they work inside my headphone amp. And we have yet to test it on the GU50, but we're going to do that soon. But isn't that a neat package? This is from, let me see, Novosibirsk. This is their logo right here. Their earlier logo is a, um, what is that? I believe it's a pentagon shape. And this is their later one. But I love how they package these. The packaging is simple, but it holds the tube perfectly centered along the pins. Let's just pop that open real quick. And it's easy to open and get out without tearing anything. Take a look at that. It's a very simple design, but it works extremely well. So that's nice looking. That's an example of a later box. Uh, you'll, you'll find these tubes um, bulk packed and also uh, packed in little boxes like these. So that's a nice little look at that. Okay, so what's come in recently? Uh, we've got a whole bunch of interesting 6SL7 variants in the store. And we've got a bunch of cool 7F7 versions. Let me grab them. So, you all know that I am crazy for Loctals. And we've recently put in a whole bunch of these 6SL7 variants. Of course, they're the 7F7, so you require an adapter to use them in any place where there's a 6SL7. But we have everything here from the absolute latest version, which are these angle plate small getters, to the slightly older version, angle plate with a nice big chrome dome. Sorry, I'm having trouble getting that to focus here. All the way back to these early black plate versions and early gray plate versions. And these are some of the oldest tubes that we have here. In particular, this one is kind of interesting. It's a variation that we haven't seen before and it has a copper support post right in between the plates. So we managed to find a small number of these and they're matched and all these are in the store as matched pairs available with links to the adapters that you need to use them as well. We sell those as well. So there's a, a nice variety of Sylvania made 7F7 tubes which you know, we haven't found a Sylvania um, 6SL7 that we haven't liked. They've all been fantastic. They all have that warm house sound. So let's clear these out of here. They're all in there if you're interested. What's next? Well, we've got another 6SL7 version. This one, let me bring it right up here. Obviously made by Tungsol. Wait a second, that doesn't look like 6SL7, that looks like 6SU7. Well, it is. But the 6SU7 is actually just a Tungsol version of the 6SL7 that was created to be low noise and, ha and to have higher durability. It also has this really, really unique look to it with the brown base and this sort of coated glass three quarters of the way up. We only found a small number of these and they are used not new old stock so we were able to match up one single pair that are in the store here and I'm sorry to let them go because we listened to these in the Wilsonton R8 and they have just this lovely smooth sound to them that is just you know it's perfect for jazz and, and acoustics and I don't know, I, I really like the sound of these. So we're gonna keep our eyes out for more and hopefully we'll find some more in the future here. So they're in the store. And last but not least, I bet you all could spot this type of tube from a mile away. This is the 5691. Now the 5691 is a 6SL7 equivalent. It's got this great reddish brown base and obviously was built for high durability and long life. These tubes were made by RCA along with some versions of the 6SN7 and 
what was the other one? I think it was a, an SJ7 version in a metal can that was painted red. I could be wrong about that. But they made these tubes as a, as a long life, highly durable one. And we managed to find a whole bunch of these 6SL7 equivalents, new old stock, which is really hard to find these days. We were able to get enough to put three matched pairs of them in the store. So they're available now. And on top of that, we have also put them in there at a hefty discount too. So if you've always wanted to try these tubes out, but have never been able to afford it, go check them out. I think the price is going to surprise you a little bit. As for how they sound, well, I popped them in the Wilsonton and had a good listen. Of course, I noise tested all these tubes and they have, what I'm starting to find is the RCA house sound, which Dad describes, and I, I guess I'm going to describe it that way too, as a warm, buttery, rich sound. And especially in the mid-range, it just it has a really nice warm mid-range. So, those are in the store. We've got six of them, three matched pairs. Go check them out if you're interested. So that's all for today, folks. If you stay till the end, here's some discount codes for you. Of course, we've got free shipping on $150 or more after discounts or a flat rate of $20 worldwide. That's it for today. Stay safe. Happy listening. This is Charles from Valves and More signing off. Cheers, everyone.